All right, welcome back to Two Stupid Guys Trade Stocks. I'm Vinny. I'm Dylan. And we got a fun one here. We're going to break down Michael Burry's like little inflation treasury kind of bet here uh, from his last 13F filing. And we talked about it briefly in our video about you know his most recent 13F filing. But I kind of wanted to delve a little bit deeper and look at where these positions are now compared to when he entered them and that sort of stuff and talk about them a little bit more in depth. So if you guys are new here and kind of enjoy this uh, entertaining stock market content, please consider subscribing below for us. Uh, Dylan and I are just kind of like two normal guys trying to figure this thing out, make a little bit of money at the process. So, yeah, I felt like man. a lot of a lot of people went over uh, his stuff, but no one talked about the actual like how important these positions are and what his actual bet is. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the uh, you know the Tesla headline was was all the rage, but like I think that's yeah. an interesting play. But like the Treasury one is definitely more interesting to me, especially when you look at where these positions have traded since uh, the quarterly filing. Uh, so this is to kind of give you a little illustration. I found this picture actually on Facebook. I thought it was interesting about uh, it, lumber prices and inflation, just to give you an idea. And you know, I've been looking at building a deck and like it, this is, it keeps me up at night how crazy lumber prices have gotten. <laughs> that is absolutely crazy. That's a that's a good photo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is, you know, like a, a lumber mill had posted this on, on like their Facebook page and it's been turned into a meme. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, it's crazy. Man. Yeah, absolutely insane, especially if you're trying to build anything. So, you know, one of the things that kind of plays into this whole inflation story and treasuries is that as inflation increases, which is measured by the consumer price index here, some people argue it's not the best measurement of inflation, but it's the one that's most widely used. As the infl as inflation increases with the CPI, the Jerome Powell, Mr. Like money printer himself, is going to have no choice at all but to you know, start cranking up the interest rates. We're sitting at historically low interest rates. Um, so he's going to have a have to increase interest rates. And when that happens, you see the treasury yield uh, start to spike here. Treasury yield represents like what percentage you're getting paid, right? You know, like get, throw an example out there, Dylan. Um, you know, if I want to borrow a hundred bucks from you and I was going to pay you back next week, what do you, what would you say is a reasonable interest rate for that? Like how much more money would you want me to give you in a week? For one week? Yeah, one week. A dollar? Yeah, a dollar, right? So 101 bucks, right? So yeah. we're talking about a yield here of basically 99. You know, kind yeah. of because inverse yield is what we're looking at here. Now imagine, you know, if, if I were to borrow 100 bucks for you and I'm going to pay you back in 30 years, like you'd probably want a little more interest, right? $102. You want at least $102. That's basically what's priced into the market right now. That's insane. That's how cheap money is for long Oh, wait, I was joking. I went way more than that. Okay. Oh yeah, no, but that—that's really not far from what the reality is right now in terms of how cheap money is. I mean, look at okay. these—you uh, know—mortgage rates. They're like three percent. It's insane. Uh, the I think it's a uh, Swedish government issued a hundred-year bond for one percent rate. <laughs> a hundred-year bond. Hundred-year bond. One percent. Okay. Yeah, that was last year, but it's things have come up a little bit, but it's still pretty stark. So, this is to kind of highlight the the inverse relationship here of interest rates and uh, yields. As the interest rate rises, the actual like price of the bond falls because they're uh, they're opposite of each other in terms of how the bond is priced. What does that mean, like yields rise, the treasury yield? Yeah, it's the percentage that you're ultimately earning on your money. Got it, okay, so yeah. the interest percentage. Yeah, exactly, the interest percentage is the yield and the prices and, and the uh, yield are opposite of each other. Got it. All right. So uh, these are the positions from Michael Burry's latest 13F filing. He had four treasury positions. Uh, so he's got a put on TLT. Uh, a He's got actually long shares on this TBT. And then he bought a call on both TMV and Triple T here. We're going to talk about what they are and look at where they are since this filing. So TLT is a... Uh, 20 plus year uh, treasury bond ETF, ex ETF exchange uh, traded fund. This is a fund that's designed to kind of basically mirror the Barclays Capital 20 plus year treasury index. All right. Okay. Mind you, remember, well, sorry, we're going to ask a question, Dylan. No, I, what, what's a bond? <laughs> uh, so a bond is like a long-term uh, loan instrument, I guess, if you will. Okay. Uh, it, it's a way to exchange money. It's, it's Another way of thinking of like loan, but it's usually to government. It can be also to a municipality or even to um, companies, but that's 
typically what you're thinking of. Treasury bond is to a, a government entity. Got it. All right. And in this one, he bought a put. Now, do uh, you know what a put contract is, Dylan? So if he bought a put, he is expecting um, the 20 plus treasury bond ETF to go down. Exactly. Yeah. He profits if the price goes down because a put contract gives him the right to sell uh, shares of this TLT ETF at a specific price on or before a certain date. All right. So, so he's a- betting that the treasury bond is going to go down with this bet. So then he will make money as long as the, okay. All right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, these positions are definitely a little complicated. So this is that TLT. This is the, the year-to-date chart. Now, we know that Burry held this position as of the end of March, March 31st. That's when the quarter ended. And it's traded pretty flat since then. So we knew he was still in this as of that point. Right? But it hasn't, you know, it had a decent move towards the bear side, which would have been profitable for a put uh, during the first quarter. But it's been flat since then. All right. You know, I noticed that trend here without with everything else, pretty much. So TBT, um, this is a ProShares Ultra Short ETF. All right, so meaning they are actually a bearish, meaning they, they expect the twenty-year Treasury prices to drop. Okay. So then this is essentially the same as the first bet, but this is leveraged two hundred percent. So. Uh, yes, it's just a different way of playing it because in the first instance, he was using an options contract. Um, this one is not an options contract. This is just, is just shares within oh, this. Oh, these are just shares. Yeah, okay. these are just shares. He bought into this inverse ETF with shares. Okay. But same thing. You He profits by the prices going down in this particular instance. Got it. And if you notice, they, they had... a. Uh, Decent move up during the first quarter here, but as of the end of the quarter, where he, we know he still held this position, it's been basically flat, slightly negative. All right. Okay. So flat since then. Now here's another play. This is in this instance he bought a call contract, and it's on a three X ETF. So a call is already leveraged, hundred shares to one. And then yeah. this is leveraged 300% because I play these with financials. Correct. So this is just leverage upon leverage upon leverage. Yeah, leverage upon leverage upon leverage, yes. Oh, boy. That's, uh, uh, this is the kind of bet where, you know, you you bet a dollar and you can stand a profit, you know, $10. You know, if you, <laughs> I can't say the exact leverage ratio because I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, th- this is to that degree where you're getting many times your initial investment back if you are indeed correct. And once again, this this was bullish throughout the whole first quarter. Uh, So the call on this would have made money during the first quarter. Mm -hmm. However, same thing, right at the end of the quarter here, just uh, March 31st, uh, it's been basically flat, slightly negative since then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So pretty, pretty flat, but it, we know for a fact that it, it uh, you know, he still held yeah. it after this period. Okay. Got it. Yep. And his final play, the T triple tr- uh, T triple T, uh, I guess ETF here, uh, was also an ultra short uh, twenty plus uh, year treasury. So he's betting on the long term ones. That's been consistent throughout as well. Uh, you know, betting on their prices de- decreasing here. So uh, this is another bet. So it's essentially four bets. Yes. Two are stocks that are leveraged 200% that are both going against the treasury. One okay. is a put and one is a call, but both in the outcome of going against the treasury. Yeah, it's two calls, one put and a long shares on a, a leveraged ETF. Oh boy. Yeah, so these are all leveraged. That and they're really all- ballsy. Yeah, I know, right? Um, you know, the it, really interesting to me thing too is like obviously throughout the whole entire first quarter, his prediction was correct. All of these things moved exactly how do you'd expect them to? Um, you know, if you wanted to, you know, make money on this trade throughout the entire first quarter, it's been perfect. But the interesting thing to me is that we know he held them still as of March thirty first, and they've been flat to slightly negative since then. 
Yeah. Mm. This is this is that final final chart. Same kind of thing. Uh, it's been flat and slightly negative. And as you know, Dylan, with with options, as the time to the option expiration approaches, the option loses value just from that yeah. time theta decay. You, you lose that sweet theta. Yeah, exactly. So the real question is, is like, you know, is this a, a play that's worth instituting at this point in time? Or, you know, were these long dated options? To, you know, we don't know. They don't, he doesn't have to disclose that. Um, you know, in the, like, obviously in the first quarter, he would have been positive. But the real question to me is, is this a position that's worth getting into? Because we're going to see likely some degree of uh, interest rate in increase over the next year, a year and a half at most, I would think. So if the treasury yield increases, then he's correct. Yeah, he's profiting. Exactly. Yeah, the treasury okay. yield increases, he's profiting. And we are well, far it's so from... low. I mean, it almost has to go up. Yeah, exactly. If, if you think of it from a mean reversion standpoint, uh, it, it, you know, up would be the direction that we expect it to be going in to get back to its historical kind of baseline. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So, well, it, well, we're still nowhere near the historical baseline because didn't aren't they like one point six? Yes. It actually was down a little bit on Friday because of the jobs report. So the jobs the report came out and it was good but not great. Uh, it was like a hundred thousand less than they wanted, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. So you know that that was helps the kind of give Jerome Powell more ammunition in terms of not having to increase um, the Fed funds rate, you know, by saying like, oh, the economy is not quite back yet. He's able to justify keeping the Fed funds rate at zero. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, man, that is just leverage. That is so much leverage. Yeah. That, that is, is a lot of leverage, a lot of time, and it, you know, he still owns it. So, it, you know, the, He's my, got balls you, of steel. He's also yeah. shorting Tesla. Man, that guy, <laughs> he should be an Avenger or something. <laughs> I know, that's crazy. Yeah, uh, that, that'd be that'd be quite a sight to behold. <laughs> the, he's got to be like a playing poker with him must be an absolute nightmare. <laughs> like, <Very true. laughs> that you know, the thing I've been debating while I was kind of reading about all this stuff is like whether or not I am interested in following him into this trade a little bit. I, I, well, I might pick up a options contract uh, with I would say sometime into the next year? spring, like a year or so now. To see if I can profit from this, I'll do it if you do it. Yeah, be interesting. I don't Let's know. Let's just do it. Yeah, just just go. Just Dude, go for he's it. never wrong. He's true, except for the time he was like buying a bunch of nickels or whatever. Yeah, um, makes sense. You know, I will <laughs> say in those graphs, if you'll notice the direction that he wanted, you know, all those to go, um, the moving averages were like on on any of them. Actually, they were all the same thing. The moving averages were slowly meeting the price. And oftentimes you can get a push up or down. So it's probably, you know, we could get another big leg up here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would not be surprised, honestly. We'll be waiting the next 13F filing to see if he's still in these positions throughout this quarter. I think this may be a longer term play for him. Uh, that's my suspicion, at least. He's obviously right in the first quarter there, but, you know, he can have uh, another, another six months, nine months, maybe at least, before this plays out. Right. All right. Good stuff. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one.